Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Dan Lee, and as Dr. Fong said, I'm from his lab, and um, I'm a grad student. And I'm going to present to you. I'm going to present two web-based browsers today. One is the uh, Encode um, Element browser, uh, which look at two different, um, uh, which is uh, comprised of four, a, a, a suite of four tools that look at two different data sets. One is gene expression, and the other one is uh, cis regulatory elements. Uh, and note when I say cis regulatory elements, they're putative cis regulatory elements. Uh, so they're not known to be uh, true cis regulatory elements without any uh, functional validation experiments. And the next one is the 3D Genome Browser, which look at um, high C uh, data as well as Chia Pet data, uh, which look at the, the visualizes the 3D genome uh, in, in the two, in the two uh, in a two-dimensional two plane. So, so what are the goal of having these resources? So number one is we want to query the most relevant ENCODE data. And by this, I mean we want to um, really, really zoom in into the data set we're interested in, such as the most relevant tissues or the genes that we're interested in. Um, as um, I, I understand, most people here are interested in, in certain genes rather than the entire genome. Um, the, the next one is to visualize complex data, and this is especially true for the high C da the data sets, which are um, uh, comprised of um, com uh, complex interactions in the 3D space. And the other one is, uh, and, the and the final goal is to provide, provide an additional layer of evidence for, to identify this, the target genes of cis, -re cis -re regulatory elements. Which is, uh, which is putting together the power of both identifying potential fu functional cis elements as well as how they're, st if they're structurally linked to any target genes. So these tools, as I said, are web-based and they require JavaScript and um, I recommend support for HTML5 as well. And you will get all this if you have a modern browser, with, um, updated browser. And, and I recommend Chrome, uh, the latest versions of Chrome, um, uh, to avoid any technical difficulties. So part one is the ENCODE element browser. Okay, so um, this is uh, meant to be a live demo, so if you wanna um, work, if you, if you wanna um, work on your computer with me as I go along, that's fine. Uh, so this part um, is basically described how to actually get to the first part, the ENCODE element browser website. <coughs> So first, we, um, we have to go to the ENCODE portal, the ENCODE project.org, um, go click on data, and then click on, uh, what is it, annotations. And the first link you see around the center of the page will be the link to the element browser. So if you click that, we will bring a website like this. And as, as I said, the, uh, this browser is a suite of four tools and um, it is available for human and mouse. So we're gonna work on human for today, and, um, uh, but keep in mind that is the steps are identical for, for mouse. So the first part, the first tool number one is option one, which, um, which if you enter a gene, it will give you the gene expression of the gene in RPKM across the ENCODE um, cell types. Um, so if I, if I, so here in in this demo here, I will enter the gene IKZF1. So if you notice, as you start enter, um, it will prompt you for the gene that you, so you can select. So you don't have to put the whole gene every time. And then you can click submit. And here is the, um, and it will show off the entire uh, uh, the results. So here is the results. Um, so the first part is a gene ID. So it has a many synonyms in uh, uh, synonymous uh, uh, denotations. So we support gene IDs, uh, Uniprot ID, as well as RefSeq ID. So, uh, I mean, by the gene ID, I mean gene symbol. Um, so any of those will be fine. And um, of course, I also show, show synonyms on ensemble. Unfortunately, ensemble is not supported, but we'll get to that in the future. Um, and um, so here, so the, the um, uh, so there's a bar graph. 
here's the bar graph of the uh, uh, of the uh, gene expression in RPKM across different tissues, and uh, here is the raw data. And then the the gene that we of interest that we're actually entered is the the IKZF1 gene is the E. cross family zinc uh, finger protein one, which is involved in immunohematopoiesis. So uh, so as you expect, actually, uh, these genes show up in um, uh, this is too small to read, but if you if you if you go to your website and click on it, it will enlarge the picture. And these, as you can see, um, you will see CD20 cells, GM12878, K562, and monocytes, and so on. So this is very um, uh, shows the uh, so this is consistent on what we know of this gene. Um, so this is the first resource, and the second resource um, is is actually combines number number of tools number two and three, in which we look at um, uh, the uh, DHS, uh, the, the, the DNA's heterosensitive sites, as well as the transcription factor binding sites that are available in the regions that are designated by the user. And these, um, these sites are, are found by experiments from the John Stems lab and Dr. Crawford's lab, but they're compiled by Dr. Uh, uh, Wong's lab from UMass. And it's a fast and easy way to really determine the cis regulatory pulitive uh, cis regulatory elements and their tissue specificity. So in the first option, you enter the region of interest. Just um, you, you don't have to do this with me if you don't want to because it's a complex number. But if you enter the gene of interest, I mean, sorry, the region of interest, and this is um, spoilers, it's actually the, Icar the, uh, the gene that we just entered, the Icarus gene. Um, we, the result is going to show you the, um, the, D, the D, DHSs as well as TFBSs in, the, in those regions. Um, here are the, 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 the genetic coordinates as well as the relevant tissues that actually have these, um, have these uh, uh, regions of interest, uh, these elements of interest. And, um, but this is very tedious in entering numbers. So the, sec the second part of the tool is actually you can enter the gene itself as well as a region uh, that you would want to um, purview. So if you if you so here we enter the AKZF1 gene as well as um, uh, I w I w we want to look at all the DHSs and transcription factor bindings within 1KB. We can do submit and we see this. Uh, uh, we can see the results similar to the last option, but for centered on the gene of interest. Uh, so, so the, a new a new uh, functionality that I added just last night actually is that you don't want to copy and paste this, right? Um, so, uh, if you want to uh, parse it with where you want to save it. Um, you can actually save it here as a C CS, uh, a comma separated file, and um, export it to Excel. So this is a, a new functionality that I just implemented that is not actually in my presentation. So the final one, final suite uh, tool is um, the, uh, the DHS linkage uh, uh, finder. And what DHS linkage is, um, so a pair of DHS is said to be linked if um, one proxal DHS, which is around a TSS, uh, and a distal DSS, which is far away from the DSS, from, from, from the TSS, shows consistent activity across many different tissues. So in this example here, um, so we have two proximal, proximal DHSs here. And then one distal DHS. So um, if you look at the activity for uh, the, the DHSB, you can see that it is more correlated and more consistent with a, with a distal DHS compared to DHSA. And because these two, uh, distal DHS and proximal DHSB, are highly correlated and have a high Pearson correlation, we can, we can say that these, are, these two pair of DHS are linked. And when they're linked, it's possible 
that the distal regulates the proximal. But of course, without further exper functional experiments, we wouldn't know for sure. But this is a, a good indicator that it's a really, um, that we're on the right track, that this is a cis potentially functional cisrotary element. So here, um, for option four, we is, uh, is also gene-based. Uh, gene so we enter the gene that we have been interested in, IKZF1, and then um, here is the results. So, I, so it, it shows you the, uh, the proximal D, uh, DHS as well, um, which is correlated to the gene. So these should be the same. That is have a, a, above 0.7 cutoff for Pearson correlation for distal DHS. And then um, if you have, if you're interested in one of these regions um, to, see, to see exactly what is actually, um, uh, what tissue it is, um, it is relevant in, it is actually linked to tool number two. So if you click on the correlation coefficient here, we actually get back to the, um, the, the we actually query the, the option two to look at what um, DHS and transcription factor binding are there. And we see that there are two possible transcription uh, factor that binds to uh, 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 I have uh, that, that, that could uh, regulate uh, um, Icarus, and the tissues that they show up in is actually consistent with the tissue that Icarus shows up in. So this is a really good way to really hone in your uh, hypothesis and um, to look for potential cis regulatory element for your gene of interest. So on the other hand, what if we want it? Um, we have we want to look at, we have a gene of interest, and what could be our cis regulatory element, um, we use a different approach with the spatial interaction approach. So here we, so here we, we, um, we harness the power of uh, prox proximity ligation method, um, especially um, HiC uh, for, the, for the 3D genome browser here. And um, and um, so to so, so get here, we go to 3dgenome.org, and um, and then we click on HiC interactions. This is uh, this is for HiC, and we enter our gene of uh, our gene of interest. We enter our gene of interest or or region of interest, if you prefer. And we uh, and here are the results for the, uh, oh, and by the way, up here you can select uh, the data set, and we have high quality data set um, that we, all, we, have, we have the one KB data set by, by Raw et al. from the, the Lieberman Aiden lab, and which have high resolution um, interaction, uh, 3D g genome interaction data set. And we can see here, we can see, um, we can navigate this region um, with move, uh, with um, uh, moves uh, left or right, or we can zoom in or out. Uh, we could adjust the atten intensity. Um, here is the high C uh, heat map, and this is contextualized, con uh, contextualized by the UCSC genome browser. So, um, so this is showing how um, I, I identify a region of interest. And, and um, th these regions have high, high um, interaction values, so they show up with high intensity in the, uh, in the, in the uh, high C, um, in the um, contact matrix. Okay. And then if, with that gene of interest, uh, sorry, the region of interest, we can double click to zoom in to the region of interest. And you can see the genome browser also zooms in along with, um, with the, the high C uh, heat map to contextualize the region. And then, as I said, you can adjust, adjust the intensity of the data set. Um, here you can see you can either use the slide bar or you can, auto, uh, you can, uh, you can either use the little arrows um, with, with the text box or you can directly enter the values of interest as in, you've shown here and click refresh. So, so you could adjust the intensity to look for the, um, the very subtle interactions. 
uh, with in, in the, the uh, localized context. Okay. And, and this is showing how you could interact with the UCSC Chino browser um, as you would, you would normally. Um, and then you could, and then if you screw up the alignment to the high C map, so in here I'm, I'm modeling, uh, modifying a tract, and then if, if I, now the, the uh, alignment is, is, um, is, is off now, so I can click, just basically click on align UCSC genome browser. So this is showing how uh, it's, it's off, al not aligned, and then I, I aligned. With that button, I can automatically align the genome browser. So in here, you can use your own data, not just the data that is provided by our server. And for this, if you convert your high C contact matrix <coughs> into the binary upper triangular matrix files or Butler files, you could directly visualize your data without having to upload your text, text files in, directly onto the server. And then since I ran out of time, we also have the 4C and ChiaPed uh, visualization. If you enter the, your gene of interest, uh, it will show you uh, with that gene as the anchor, the potential interactions near, nearby that gene. And, uh, and this is paired with, uh, chi uh, with uh, ChiaPed data to see what is interacting with the TSS of the gene of interest, and this is also contextualized by the UCSC genome browser. So with these tools, um, you can actually uh, identify cis respiratory elements as well as their target genes and before the hypothesis for, for further biological um, validation. So thank you. <laughs>